Hey y'all, it's Chad again. Pardon the background noise. I've got the laser going full time. It is uh, ornament season and I'm gonna show you what that's all about in just a minute. Okay, let me go ahead and step out here for a moment. Okay, it's, uh, <laughs> I got a construction project going on back here. It's actually not construction, it is home maintenance. That's important with the HOA. Uh, Homeowners Association, in case you don't know what that is and don't have to deal with them. But anyway, um, it's been over a month since I last posted. I know that is unacceptable, especially if you're trying to build a channel like I am, but, uh, uh, I have just been having a heck of a time trying to get to building this guitar because every time well, well basically Guitar building is is what I do for fun. It's a hobby uh, It's not a business. Uh, I do other stuff for For uh, for a business I make stuff uh, right now. It's ornaments, and I've also been doing uh, like retirement gifts, but uh, you know, the, the hobby has to take a back seat sometimes, and right now, coming up on the holidays is definitely the busy season. And, you know, here's my my laser goggles. Uh, eye protection and safety is important. Anyway, um, yeah, so I just wanted to make it a point to get some footage today and get back into uh, uh, a posting. So... Here I am, I'm going to do a quick uh, project on the bass guitar and, uh, and I'm gonna go and show you that right now. Again, please excuse the background noise. This is a working shop and, and uh, it is active. So right now you're hearing behind me the, the laser and you're also hearing the, uh, the blower, the exhaust fan, and the chiller. A uh, lot, lot of working pieces that go into uh, making the laser operate. So here I am on my my uh, workbench. It's actually my my new CNC machine. I'm going to go ahead and show you what that is in a little bit. But uh, I need to go ahead and review not only for you but for myself where we left off with this uh, this bass guitar. So here it is. Uh, you recall we we routed the truss rod channel and we did some shaping on the uh, on the transition here because. Um, the customer actually wanted a thinner neck, so we went ahead and made it a thinner neck, which changed our whole design a little bit. Uh, not a problem. I went ahead and, and shaved this all down, and uh, so here we are. We've got the truss rod installed. It is, it is. Um, did I epoxy it in? I think I epoxy it in. But uh, I noticed uh, after it already dried that we are a little high on the truss rod. That's unacceptable. It's not going to work when we go to attach the fretboard. Um, to show you what I'm talking about, I'm going to go ahead and uh, change the camera angle and uh, show you. Okay, so here we are at the bird's eye view. This is the, the head of the bass guitar. This is your truss rod that I have installed. And right here it's very slightly high. And I'm going to show you that with the fret rocker. You can get these from Stumac. Uh, these are pretty good for dressing and leveling your frets. Uh, but just uh, to show you what the problem is, you see that? That is too much height on the truss rod. So we've got some options how to fix it. We can do what we can to rip the whole thing out. That's probably not a good idea because you're going to make a mess out of the finished product that, uh, that you're working. Um, we're certainly not going to file this down. This is metal underneath this plastic um, band. Um, the other thing that we're going to do is modify the back of the fretboard slightly and we're going to route a very shallow channel 
uh, up the center. Actually, before I set up the new CNC machine to route the back of the fretboard, um, there's an update to the project, to the plan, uh, to the material. So you recall back in the Wingate episode when I was trying to, to source a fretboard piece of ebony, didn't find one, so, so I went with the Wingate to use as a fretboard. I've never used it or I've seen it used as a fretboard, um, so I was always a little wary of it, but it looked good. Um, and this is, this is the Wingate material. It would have been cool because it would have matched the fretboard. Matter of fact, here is a strip. Um, so it would have looked a little something like this. So only, only completely covering it, of course. But um, we've had a development in uh, in the project, and uh, I started noticing on my Instagram feed this company called Rich Light. Um, it's a material that is. I don't want to say it's synthetic, but it's made out of um, recycled paper. Um, I think it's recycled. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's made out of paper. A lot of, lot of thin layers of, of, of paper, and it's all epoxy together. And you're left with a very stable material, hard and stable material, that uh, companies like Martin Guitars use uh, for their fretboards. And it is... Um, really cool because um, if you want a jet black fretboard then that's what you can get you can also get them in uh, various different colors but uh, the customer really wants this to be black and that's why she asked for ebony um, but uh, that uh, that uh, proved to be a little impossible and a little too expensive for a bass guitar because bass guitars are bigger so yeah, I'm going to do a proper review on on these Rich Light fretboards. I wrote to the company; they actually sent me two for free, uh, just to test out and to uh, showcase on this on this uh, project. Um, so I will use one on this project and another one on my next project that I got planned for a guitar. Um, yeah, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to route out the back of this thing very slightly again um, and look forward to probably the next video when I do a proper review of this stuff. I'm going to try to break it, I'm going to burn it, I'm going to soak it, I'm going to do everything I can to uh, to destroy it and put it through uh, all the all the stresses of, of life of the guitar. Uh, so that should be interesting, I hope it's interesting and uh, make sure you stay tuned for that. So. Here we are at my new and upgraded CNC machine. It is a beautiful beast. It is larger. It is uh, more powerful, bigger motors, and the uh, uh, it's a, such an upgrade from the other one. The other one was belt driven, and this one is screw driven. All right, as you can see, the uh, work bed space is uh, one meter wide by 1.4 meters, and it's and I put on these. These larger motors that I've had for the last 10 years, because I was I was gonna build, build something like this about 10 years ago, and I went ahead and bought a lot of the parts, and I never did get it done, um, at least properly, and it basically failed. But uh, <laughs> so so I went ahead and spent a little bit more money on this. I got bigger motors. You see the big motors in the back here. Look at that. Uh, two of them run this. So the way it works is these screws are turned uh, inside. Uh, in here, there's like a nut, so it drives the, uh, this is called a gantry, and that's the x-axis. It drives the x-axis uh, back and forth, and this here is the y-axis, and as the motor turns this screw, it moves this whole uh, z-axis assembly this way and that way. And this, of course, is your z-axis, which raises and lowers your motor. Uh, it all talks to the computer down here and I've got a monitor in a drawer I need to do uh, a different solution to that um, so yeah this is it and I added the uh, the wasteboard here and the uh, t-track rails for ease of, of hold down I built this table it's a giant table 
that is on these rollers that I can that I can uh, raise and lower. Um, yeah, and it's and it's about uh, ribs rib high <laughs> to me. So yeah, it's it's beautiful, and I will now set up the fretboard to cut a channel in the back and uh, I guess they can go ahead and watch that normally I would uh, when I run this I would plug in a computer program to program the channel but I can do that manually with the keyboard and just drive it straight drive it straight like that so yeah let's go ahead and get that set up I'm gonna use my drywall square to line up my piece All right, so we're all set up here. Um, I'm gonna run the uh, the router uh, down the back of the the fretboard, and it's only like a 30 second depth that I need to go into just to just to make it so it's just flat on the neck. So the fretboard's just flat on the neck without having the uh, the high spot of the router. I mean, sorry, the uh, truss rod uh, in the way, so I can get this thing glued on and uh, move on with the project. All right, so it looks like I'm only going to be doing two passes to get a 5 16 inch uh, channel routed out of the back of this fretboard. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so the camera is now mounted to the spindle on my CNC machine, and we're going to take a ride. See, look, I can control, I control this with the keyboard. Like so. And this is all I'm going to do for tonight's project. We're just going to manually route this channel. And that answers our question, will Richlight fretboards wrap? I think that's our answer. We didn't take off much, uh, like like uh, 1 32nd is all. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and add it to the, uh, the neck and see if it rocks. See if we solve the problem. Feels pretty Solid. Yep, it's definitely flat. We have 
cleared the truss rod. Okay, there it is. Just a quick little task to get us back in the groove. Join us next time when we actually attach this thing and shape it to the neck profile. Pretty soon we're gonna get into um, the body. I've got somebody who has offered to actually do a 3D model of the body that we want. And then from the 3D model, we can take what's called the G code, uh, which is the, the computer code that talks to this machine. And we're gonna carve that body one day. Uh, also, to look forward to, we got the back of the neck uh, um, shape that we got to carve. We will hand carve that. Um, it's a simple process and it's uh, one of the most enjoy enjoyable things that uh, I do on guitars. Um, that's when we give the actual curve to the back of the neck. All right, if you like what you've seen, go ahead and like and subscribe to this channel. Uh, there's more to come. We will finish this guitar uh, hopefully within the next few months and then we'll move on to the next project. And uh, if you want to be a part of that, make sure you just uh, participate in the conversations below and um, hit the bell for notifications. See you next time. Okay, so there you have it, my one episode so far for November. Uh, it might be the only one for November, but uh, keep your fingers crossed, maybe I'll get another one in after Thanksgiving. But uh, yeah, it's Veterans Day today. Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna try to get this episode edited and posted tonight. Uh, that'll be a record for turnaround for me. Uh, if you are a veteran, go ahead and uh, and uh, say hi in the comments and uh, and maybe tell a little story if you want uh, where you served and whatnot so until next time bye